What's going on guys? Kyle Welcher here, Bassmaster Lead Series Pro. We're going to tell y'all a little bit about, well, I was just filming with Bassmaster yesterday. So that's how I start off videos in there is Kyle Welcher, Bassmaster Lead Series Pro. It just transitioned into my YouTube channel, so sorry y'all know who it is if y'all watching this video. But anyways, I'm going to take y'all through the components I use and kind of what I do to build these Point Blank and Fuji components rods that I build. So everybody knows that I, not everybody, most people that watch my videos know I custom build my own rods. Here's one right here that I'm building right now. Just got it glued up. Have one wrap on this entire rod out of about 12. So we have, you know, I actually like 13 that I have to wrap completely on this rod. But anyways, beside the point, I'm going to show you all the exact components that I use. Starting off with the real seat. I use a Fuji SK2 real seat. There it is right there. That's how much of a real seat I have on my rods. It is not much at all. Tiny little piece of, of graphite. I think that's made out of graphite. And here's the cork that I use for my handle. It slides right into there. It fits in the real seat. This is the SK2 contoured cork. Super small cork. I have very big hands. And I only, whenever I'm fishing, I only use about this much of the cork. And I have my reel in these three fingers, obviously. So that's about all the cork that I actually need on my rod. Now I use the very small Fuji butt cap. Goes down here at the end. I usually have my handles on my 7 foot 3 rods at 10 and 3 eighths of an inch long. From the back of the reel seat all the way to the very bottom of this butt cap. It's usually 10 and 3 eighths inches long. And I use this type of a barrel. Comes with an SK2 reel seat. You have to, you know, put it up there and glue it on separate from the reel seat and it's got a little bit of a space where the blank is a little bit open in the meat in the middle and then the threads that i use is the fuji ultra thread the reason i use the ultra thread instead of this no cp thread the no cp thread looks a lot prettier has a lot better color to it but the ultra thread the epoxy is actually going to soak down into the thread and become a stronger bond down at the bottom of the guide foot underneath the wrap so i always use the ultra thread so that the epoxy can actually get down into there and i use the standard old school fuji real seat nut right here i mean just the one that has been around forever everybody uses that on everything and this is by the way how the rod looks whenever it's completely glued up and ready to rock and roll this is actually going to be hunter hamilton's rod right here that i'm building right now so it's all good little real seat seven foot three heavy rod that's that's what the cork looks like when i got it completely assembled super small but that's how i hold it right there this rod's unbelievably lightweight so what i like to do is first thing i do is i take on take a scalpel and a scissors and i trim it down and a scissors scalpel and a scissors how about that we from bama we from bama for show and basically i cut it down to it's about this long whatever normally let me find a new one it's got right there see right there see how much i could cut off of it i probably cut a solid half an inch maybe a little bit maybe five eighths of an inch off of that thing right there and you can if you need to get a little bit closer that's a new one in the packaging obviously and here's the one that i cut off of and I sand it down to get them as flat as I possibly can. This is the way that I do it. I'm not saying this is the right way to do it. I have no idea. A Dremel tool might cut it closer. I just have a really hard time cutting it straight because there are the threads on here and cutting through those threads is very, very difficult. But this is the size I want to. And you always, in my opinion, you always cut from the back side. So the front side has a little smooth piece right there that the uh, actual, you know, what's that called? Real nut slides onto and starts screwing on. So I always cut from the back side where this, it'll still be smooth and just like it is from the factory on the front, which is actually being screwed on too, because you're never going to screw over the back side down here. So it can be a little bit rougher and you can get away with it. And I put a little wine and check on there anyways. Then what I do is I get it right here on the very high grit sandpaper, very, I mean, not high grit, very rough grit sandpaper. It's actually a lower grit sandpaper. And I sand it down until I get it to the desired length. And you can take a lot of this stuff off like pretty quickly. So, you know, I, I can I can sand it down in like 20, 25, 30 seconds. I can get it pretty smooth, almost, you know, perfectly straight. Nothing I do is ever perfectly straight, but I can get it pretty close to perfectly straight. So here's two that I finished right now. This is the length that I want them. And what that does is, like on this real rod right here, this is the one that I'm using as a sample. The reel sits in this rod re really good. And there's not much protruding out the back or the front over the, so I've got like one thread out the front whenever it's tightened all the way down and I've got like one thread out the back. And I feel like that's just a perfect setup where my fingers can touch the most amount of blank. My finger can rest in front of the reel whenever I'm holding it. And it's still got enough extra thread where the reel nut 
get the real seat nut can get extremely tight and hold the reel in place very, very well. So you can see this is actually something that's new. This is the first time I've gotten these. Fuji has a new type of arbor out and I've never used this kind before. This is my first batch of rods that had it. All my other rods I've used have this black arbor and you can see by this one has a lot, the black one has a lot more inconsistencies in it. But every time I've ever used these for a real seat, it definitely seems to hold a lot better than tape. So I do recommend people using the arbor and they say this white one is even easier to work with and a little bit more porous so it can so uh, soak up even more glue and create an even harder bond in between the real seat and the barrel and the blank. And it's really important for me because Whenever you have this split grip uh, reel seat like this, it's just another moving part. Like whenever you have the full reel seat, you can just slather a bunch of glue in there and you've got one big piece that's glued in. With the one that I have, I have two small pieces that are glued together. So it's very important that the bond it makes is very good because, you know, big hook sets, trying to catch 10 pounders out of St. John's River. You need to have something that's going to stay on there, stay in place. And hopefully this new Arbor is going to do an even better job, but I had no problems out of the Arbors that I used last year. I never had a real seat move or a real handle move. So should be all good in that department. And right now that's what we're doing getting this stuff sanded up. In a little while, we'll be out here uh, reaming out some of this cork right here and putting on some of my rods. So this is just a rod I have here as a sample. Let's get back to sanding. All right, so I've got enough of these um, barrels, the, th the barrels with the thread on it. It's trimmed down to how I want them now. Got them pretty even. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this arbor and I'm gonna glue it into my reel seats like this and also into the barrels that I have just cut. So you can see it fits in there really snugly because it's the arbor that fits for this reel seat. So it's gonna fit in there really snug. It's gonna soak up the epoxy that I use. This is actually the rod building paste. It's gonna soak that up and then it's going to create an extremely hard bond. And then I will shape this out to the exact size of the rod blank where it slides down on there and is snug, not super tight. Cause if you got something super tight, it'll actually work like a squeegee and kind of squeegee out the glue. So you want to have a little bit of space in there, like not space where it can like wiggle, but enough space where it's not so tight it's going to squeegee out the glue. And I'm going to do that for the rod barrel also. So the first thing I'm going to do is open up my paste right here. I've used two different types of this. I've used a more liquidy type and I've used this kind. I can tell almost no difference in anything whenever I use them, but I do believe this one hardens just a hair faster and I'm trying to go ahead and get these done you know, so it really smells too. So I'm gonna go ahead and try to get this done. Oh my gosh. Really fast. So I'm gonna use the stuff that I think hardens a little bit faster. So got a little bit right there. I'm gonna get about the same amount of the other kind. I, from what I gather, it's not extremely important to have the exact same amount of this. The finishing epo epoxy has to lay extremely, you know, well and it has to dry right or, or it doesn't actually like look good and it doesn't perform super well. So this stuff right here just doesn't seem to be quite as fickle. So you can kind of just get it close. At least that's what I gather. I mean, obviously if you get it exact, it's gonna be the, the best case scenario. But from what I've seen, it's not super important to be exact. So we've got close to the same amount. It's always hard because they are a different consistency. So it's always kind of hard to know exactly how much you have and if it's the exact right amount. Go ahead and mix this together. This is the hard part. How do you hold the arbor? Don't know, have not figured out the, the best way to do that just yet. That is not something that I know. I just know how I do it. Usually it involves getting a lot of it on my fingers, which is not ideal. This is where, this is where you touch it to yourself whenever you get it right here. So slide it on down in there. About right there. Take it and we'll get the excess off and we'll use that on the next one. I'm not an expert rod builder, but I do build rods that are functionally extremely good. I took a lot of time, a lot of my time, worrying about guide spacing, the proper way, you know, this proper spacing to get the real seat where I can touch as much of the blank as possible. I spent a lot of my time measuring that type of stuff and a lot less time worrying about how pretty the actual wraps were and the designs and stuff like that so my concern when building these rods is not looks my concern is functionality all right so got the arbor and everything in here it's completely dried I actually glued this up last night so now I just take my homemade custom made reamer that a buddy of mine built for me just kind of wiggle it back and forth slide on up in there this arbor's pretty dang soft 
So it's pretty easy really to, you know, ring this thing out a little bit. All right, now I've got it reamed out enough where I can go to the drill, which goes to a lot bigger size, obviously. I believe that's going to be close right there. So what's the Look point in reaming it? So it fits perfectly. So you see where I slid it on? And it landed right there. Pretty much where you want it. Pretty snug. Pretty good. Right where you want it. Got lucky on that one. And it went to the right spot. So now we go inside. Glue this on. And we will have a rod ready to be wrapped. Ready to put the guides on. So let's go in there and glue it up. I like for the space in between my trigger right here and the barrel. Well, where's the barrel at? This one. To be exactly 3.5 millimeters. I mean centimeters. I feel like that's the the best spacing that gives me the most gap under there. Where I can really, you know, do good, have a really good feel. Keep as much stuff off the rod as possible. Because that's, that's why my rods are so light is because I don't put anything ex excess on there. With the minimum amount of everything pretty much except for things that add strength you gotta have the stuff that adds strength now what are you doing now i'm gluing the barrel on right here i've got my mark of how far i'm going to slide it down so i'm just applying a layer of glue all the way around right here so make sure I get good. Have some where it's gonna you want you want it to push some out so you know you got a lot in the usable space in there. They're pretty good right there. I'd say I'm probably gonna push a little bit of that out, so I just kind of spin it on there. I found the mark, my mark is right there. I've already got the bottom of it spined. And right there it is. Then I need to take it and put some on the bottom. It's pretty good to put it down here because it's gonna, when I slide that wine check up, it will actually even push it up in there some. Give me a really good seal down here on this part. So, I have to wipe off a lot of this thing. <clears throat> but that's okay. We want strength. We want performance. It's okay to waste a little bit of glue trying to get those two things. So this guide right here is actually called the Fuji LRV Reverse Double Foot Guide. Basically, the rod looks like it's back, the guide looks like it's backwards. It's actually supposed to be going from the reel towards the guide like this, and it's so elevated off the rod that the line comes off your reel at a normal trajectory, and it comes straight through this guide, and it never touches the guide anywhere around the guide. It has no pinch point at all. I usually go from there straight to three or two or four K-series Bigfoot guide. This is called the KB. This I put three or four of these on a rod, and then I go from there to the Fuji K-Series guide. You can see how small the foot is on this. Same guide, just a lot smaller foot, and I'll put these all the way up to the tip of the rod. So, usually put six or so of these, six or seven, and usually put two or three of the big foot, and that's all the guides I put on here. And then obviously, you gotta select you the tip you like, one that fits on the rod, and then you're ready to go catch a big old bass on your custom built rod. All right, so right here we have a 5.5 Fuji KB K series, but KB means Bigfoot guide. I'm gonna show you how I wrap this. I'm using my seven foot three heavy rod for this one. So I wrap it in red thread. So basically you take the thread, wrap it around the rod over it, bring it, wrap it around one full time. You actually take your thumb and pop the line up right here that's going into it, pop it over the wrap you just made. And then after it rolls around one more time, it'll actually catch. And then you can thread the whole deal up on there and go pretty fast. What I like to do is, I like to put the least amount, I like to put just enough thread so it'll be really strong, but not too much extra. So I actually take the slack in and I'll pull it all the way down to about right there in front of the guide foot where it's 
pretty close. It's not gonna have you know a super long guide wrap, and but it's still gonna be really really strong, especially with this big foot guide. That's why I put these big foot guides on here. On this rod, it's gonna be a braid rod. So I've got stainless steel, bigger eye, bigger uh, actual diameter guides and everything right here, and then just as fast as you're comfortable going with it, you just roll it up on there. And you can see it's just turning red all of a sudden. Feel the, go ahead and peel the tape off after we've got it secure. Put it on my little pile of tape over here. And just keep on keeping on with it. This is not fast forwarded. Alright, from there I'll take my little scrap piece of thread, make it into an actual loop. So that's what it is right there. It's just literally a loop slide it underneath the thread that's going to the blank pinch it up in, in the uh in the wrap right there no problem roll up over that a few times and what that's going to do is whenever you cut the thread now i hold up my thumb right here i'm not super good at explaining this stuff i just do it based on feel but i take the thread that's on the guide wrap run it right through that loop right there on top of that blank hold it down pull it back through and that actually pulls the thread through the thing and actually locks it in place and it helps if you have a super sharp knife to go over there and just cut that thing off and there's a guide wrap all it needs is some epoxy on it and that sucker will be there for the life of this rod pretty cool pretty cool happens pretty fast all right guys so have transitioned full force into getting my tackle ready to load it up in the boat the boat is actually getting wrapped right now as we speak and we are transitioning straight into getting tackle organized, getting everything ready, making sure we've got everything we need to head south, go to Florida. I'm gonna be a snowbird for a little while and run down there where it's nice and warm and fish a dang bass from our Sleet Series event. Where I left off at for the rod, last thing you have to do is mix up your finishing epoxy, get you a fine little brush, epoxy it on, make sure it soaks into the threads really good. I usually put two coats if I really want the rod to be good. I'll have one thinner coat and then come back second the next day and put a really pretty coat on there that's a thin layer but extremely smooth and pretty. So the last step is simply epoxy and all the guides. Y'all see me wrap a couple of guides. So that's it. That's how I build my rods. That's exactly what I do. And I hope y'all enjoyed that video. I'm not saying I do it the right way. I'm just saying that's the way that I do it and that's the way that I've probably built 30 or 40 rods now. So it's been pretty good. It's been a fun process of, of building them and everything. And that's it, guys. We'll see you on the next video. Everything's getting loaded up right now. It's a disaster in here. Baits everywhere, reels everywhere. We're getting everything dialed in though. Time to go to Florida. The next video will be a St. John's travel vlog. Potentially. We might make a middle in between. Or but coming up very soon will be a St. John's River travel vlog. Probably in the next or week like or Or so. like a boat rigging vlog. Or like packing the boat probably. Yep. A couple ideas floating around. But So hit that subscribe button. Turn the alerts on. So you do get to keep up with everything that we are doing right now to get ready to head south. So appreciate it guys.